diffuse and specular reflection. So the way that light reflects off of a surface uh, depends on the material uh, that the surface is made of. And uh, of course we know that reflection off of uh, wood looks different from metal, looks different from paper, uh, so forth. And it's not just the uh, color, but it's uh, the way that you have a highlight, whether the reflection is diffuse, so forth. So um, in computer graphics, these different characteristics uh, are called uh, the shader uh, for a surface. Uh, here we have two basic examples, a gray uh, Lambert uh, surface um, and a colored uh, blind surface. Notice the highlight on the uh, blind. Now there are two basic types of uh, reflection from a surface. Uh, the simplest is diffuse reflection. In that case, uh, the light that strikes a surface is scattered uh, in all different directions. The other type of basic reflection is specular reflection, and that is the kind of reflection you have from a mirror where the incoming light is reflected in a single uh, direction as opposed to in all different directions as in diffuse reflection. Now, uh, the simplest type of diffuse reflection is uh, called Lambert. A reflection. So for a, a surface that has a Lambert diffuse reflection, the brightness of that surface looks the same from all viewing angles. So if you focus on a spot uh, on this uh, Lambert surface and you move your head, uh, you won't see the brightness uh, change. Or if you move the camera, uh, the camera will still see the same brightness. Uh, here's an example in uh, uh, computer graphics. Here's some uh, various objects that are Lambert uh, diffuse surfaces. And we have a directional light, just to keep things simple. And as we rotate the view, uh, you notice that the uh, brightness of the floor uh, doesn't change. And any particular spot on an object, say um, a spot on the top of the cube, um, remains the same um, brightness. Now, uh, what I was just saying, the uh, all of those points on a flat uh, Lambert surface uh, look equally bright. So not only does a single spot look uh, the same uh, when you move your uh, viewpoint, uh, but in this case with a directional light, the entire flat surface has uh, the same uh, brightness for this uh, type of Lambert diffuse surface. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, the entire object is uh, the same brightness. If we go back for a moment, you notice that uh, one side of the cube that's uh, facing uh, more away from the light is darker than another part of the cube which is uh, facing more towards the light. So uh, we realize that uh, when a surface is facing a light source, then uh, we have a more uh, concentrated um, density of light rays. And when the surface is turned away uh, from the light source, um, then the light is uh, spread out uh, further. And, and this is true for, for all types of surfaces, not just diffuse. Uh, and so you see here the um, this Lambert uh, surface uh, for a sphere. The part of the sphere which is uh, facing the light source, we can tell where the light source is from the cast shadows here. Uh, so the part that's uh, facing is brighter. And then as we uh, turn the form, and uh, enter into the form shadow, then this part uh, is darker and darker. And the main reason is simply that uh, there's not as much light intensity reaching this uh, part of the surface. Uh, 
by comparison, uh, we can put a fake uh, surface uh, using a surface shader, and you see this looks totally artificial. This is actually a sphere, but we don't get any sense of its dimensionality because it has no form shadow uh, as you would with a um, diffuse reflection here uh, due to the spreading of the light rays as the form turns away from the light source. Here's uh, another example of a, light, a more complicated light source on a uh, Lambert diffuse surface. So we have a spotlight and uh, the different parts of the surface have a different uh, brightness. So the part which is closest to the spotlight and where the light is hitting uh, more head on, that uh, will be more brightly illuminated and so it will appear brighter. Uh, this other side, which is um, the light is hitting at more of an angle and also it's farther away from the light source so it won't be nearly as bright. Uh, you can see that easily just looking at how the spotlight is shining on the floor here. It's um, brightest where the light is hitting more uh, head on and as we move uh, towards the opposite corner um, the floor lighting is, is less bright. Uh, we see also examples in the form shadow of the uh, on the sphere. Now let's talk about specular reflection. Uh, well, with specular reflection, the uh, light rays that come in, instead of being scattered in all directions, they are reflected as uh, they would be from a mirror. So here I have uh, three laser beams coming in, striking a mirror, and each laser beam is mirror reflected at an angle equal to the incoming angle. And I have that no matter uh, what angle I have them coming in at with the, uh, with the mirror. So uh, we have the law of specular reflection, and that says that the angle of incidence, that's the angle the light ray comes in, equals the angle of reflection. That's the angle that the light ray comes out. And uh, traditionally, those angles are measured relative to a line that is perpendicular to the surface. So uh, just as you see in this uh, diagram. Now, this um, allows us to uh, figure out where does a mirror reflection occur on a specularly reflecting surface. And um, one example of that would be the highlight off of a shiny metal surface. So uh, you could ask yourself, uh, here we have a lamp, here we have a viewer, uh, where do you think this um, highlight would be located? Uh, position A, position B, position C, or none of these. Now you should use the law of specular reflection to figure this out, and the answer is uh, position C. And if you draw this, you realize that the um, light ray that touches this spot on the metal uh, does not reach the viewer. The light ray that touches this spot of the metal uh, also uh, goes over uh, his head, uh, but the light ray that touches uh, spot C, uh, that, because of these uh, law of specular reflection, has an angle that comes back uh, to the viewer. So here are some examples of um, uh, surface material uh, models that have this kind of um, partially specular reflection. So you see that these are not um, mirror reflections. They are still they still have some diffuse reflection, but uh, models such as uh, Blin, uh, Fong, uh, Fong E. These are all relatively popular um, models in computer graphics. Uh, they have uh, a highlight uh, on the surface uh, due to being partially specular reflecting. Here's um, 
uh, direct comparison between a scene with uh, the sphere and the, the cube uh, being a blin compared with um, Lambert. Now, besides the presence of the highlight, and, and notice that the highlight doesn't appear on the, on the cube, uh, only on the, uh, on the sphere, but what I want you to focus on here is that when I move the camera, the position of the highlight uh, shifts on uh, the sphere, and in fact, you can figure out where the position of the highlight should be uh, using the law of specular uh, reflection. And uh, here the highlight has moved to the top of the sphere. Uh, and also, uh, whereas with Lambert, the top of the cube has the same brightness uh, regardless of um, the position of the camera, with Blin, uh, when I move the camera, here I've moved it so that I'm getting a strong specular reflection off the top of the cube um, in uh, this uh, view um, here on the right. And so the top of the cube is much brighter from uh, this camera position than from the camera position uh, on the left. Then finally, uh, the specification of how a surface uh, reflects is uh, encapsulated in the bidirectional reflectance distribution function. So that's a function which, um, if you tell me the incident angle of the light source and the reflection angle, that is where uh, the light ray which is going back to the viewer or to the camera, uh, its angle. If you tell me uh, those two angles, then uh, the BRDF tells you the amount of light which is going to be reflected by the surface in that geometry. And by the way, those angles don't necessarily have to be in the same plane, so this can be a rather complicated uh, function. So in uh, summary, uh, diffuse surfaces reflect light in all directions. Uh, the brightness of a Lambert diffuse surface is the same uh, from any uh, angle of the viewer or the camera. The brightness of a surface varies with the angle and distance to the light source. So basically, uh, if the light is striking the um, surface at more of an angle, if the surface is turned away from the light source, then uh, it won't be as bright, and um, with most light sources, uh, directional light sources, the exception, but let's say for a point light source, the farther away the light source, the um, less uh, bright the surface. Uh, specular surfaces uh, mirror reflect the light rays that uh, strike them, and um, another way of saying that is that we have the law of specular reflection which states that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And uh, finally, there's a variety of surface material models used in computer graphics such as uh, Blin and Fong, uh, which combine uh, both diffuse reflection and specular reflection which uh, produces uh, highlights.